Hello everybody, this is Mark Elmo Ellis, a copywriter with Elmo Copy, and today we're going to look at copywriting mind tricks, psychological mind tricks, how you can use them in your in your advertising copy, and your email campaigns, and blog posts, whatever you happen to be writing. If you use some of these mind tricks, they'll help you write. I wanted to go into uh, uh, where I made a big mistake when I first started learning how to write advertising copy, or any type of copywriting, was I kind of ignored the psychology behind... Uh, marketing and selling. There's a psychology behind marketing and selling that's very important. So when you write copy, you need to keep these ideas in mind. I was learning how to write benefits and be clever with words and you know, I tried to be a wordsmith and all that great stuff. But, um, but uh, the big mistake I made, of course, was ignoring the, the psychological factors behind writing copy. So that was kind of dumb of me, but it took a while before it sunk in. So I decided to do a video series on all these different points. So this particular one we're gonna be looking at, as I mentioned earlier, was creating an image in the mind of your readers. That's what you wanna do. You wanna get an image of a particular thing that you want them to envision in their minds. You wanna get that into their brain so that they can actually visualize and see their future in a way. You know, so this is kind of the psychological mind trick behind this. So this is a very famous advertisement that ran years ago by Gary Halbert, and it was put in uh, financial magazines and I believe also opportunity magazines, and it was about how to make money with your credit cards. Of course, when you're running advertisements like this, you gotta make sure you've got the advertisement suited to the magazine or publication that you're going in, which is what this was tailored for perfectly. Gary Halbert, in case you don't know who he is, one of the greatest copywriters that ever existed, definitely a list and what I decided to do was look at the psychological factors he used in one of his most famous ads which was how to make money with your credit cards so just to give you an idea of how he set you up right at the very beginning of this advertisement there are two factors that are very important first he's got the image that's present at all times in front of you of a guy with a pile of money under his arms and a handful of credit cards getting past the idea of making money with your credit cards you don't think that's an actual contradiction you know, making money with your credit cards is a contradiction because usually you're spending 99.9% .9 of the time, you're almost always spending money with your credit cards. You're not making any money. <laughs> and if you are one of these hapless people that goes on and does not pay your credit card bill at the end of, before the end of the month, you're paying interest rates that are ungodly. So making money with credit cards, I mean, really would make the average financial type minded person or entrepreneur interested because it's a contradiction of terms. But uh, the image is there. You've got the picture of the guy holding the credit card, and piles of money up under his arms. And, and so the very first paragraph is really where he sets you up. Now, be, he didn't use a lot of imagery throughout this piece because he did not have the luxury of space on here. But he did use the image to reinforce uh, somebody who's being successful using credit cards and making money with them. But here's the first paragraph. It says... You may have more money in your pocket than you realize, a lot more. In fact, chances are that you have virtually thousands of dollars of hidden money in your wallet or purse right now, okay? So right off the bat, he's setting up this image in your brain where you're gonna think, oh, gosh, I got a whole junk load of money in my wallet and I'm not even using. And he sets that up. And that's what gets you going down the respect because you wanna find out, well, what are they doing that I, you know, that I can unlock this hidden key uh, you know, to uh, use all this money. Now, that's about the only place in here where he gets into all this imagery. He doesn't do it very much inside of this whole entire ad. We're going to further uh, look at this ad later on in another video because there's a lot of other psychological triggers that he uses. Okay, so let's go on to the next thing. I want to take you some other famous advertisements where they use this principle. And here it is. This is a Rolls Royce one that uh, ad that ran back in the 60s. It says, at 60 miles an hour, the loudest noise in this new Rolls Royce comes from the electric clock. So right away, you're getting this idea that this is going to be the quietest ride and it's setting up this idea in your mind. It's not necessarily an image. You've got an image in front of you showing the luxurious car, but also it's setting up how quiet it's going to be when you're driving down the road. And that kind of gets into your mind, just like an image, right? The subhead says, what makes Rolls Royce the best car in the world? There's really no magic about it. It's merely patient attention to detail. Now they really go and explore this, this attention to detail factor with this car because they're going to get into just how luxurious it is, and what a pleasure it is for you to drive. Interesting thing is they're not really talking about the outside of the car as much as they are talking about what goes on the inside because psychologically they figured, well, 
You know, the person sitting in the car more than they are outside. Of course, you always like to have a car that looks great. They had the reverse idea of saying, hey, what goes on on the inside is more important. And I'll give you a good example of this. And they're using this imagery once again. It says the coach work, and they're talking about the inside, uh, is given five coats of primer paint and hand rubbed between each coat before nine coats of finishing paint go on. Okay, so on the, on the, on the coach of it or on the inside there is a picnic table veneered in French walnut slides out from under the dash. Two more swing out behind the front seats. They're really letting you know that you're getting the top quality that you could possibly get on the inside of this car. Of course, the rest of the ad talks about the performance of the vehicle and the torturous things that they do to put this car through before they put it on the road, you know? So that kind of sets up in your mind that this is gonna be a very dependable car too. So that's another, I guess you could say that's another type of uh, imagery that they're using on this. The next ad I wanna look at, this is probably the most famous sales letter that was ever written. It's done $2 billion in sales for the Wall Street Journal. So it's a very, very successful sales letter. This one also uses imagery to get the point across and to put an image into your mind because they're using all words on this sales letter. They're not using any pictures or images. They're just painting them in your mind. And so here's the very first paragraph of this. On a beautiful late spring afternoon, 25 years ago, two young men graduated from the same college. They were very much alike, these two young men. Both had been better than average students. Both were personable and both, as young college graduates are, were filled with ambitious dreams for the future. Recently, these men returned to their college for their 25th reunion. They were very much alike. Both were happily married. Both had three children. Both, it turned out, had gone to work for the same Midwestern manufacturing company after graduation and were still there. But there was a difference. One of the men was the manager of the small department of that company and the other was its president. So that's one example right through that section where they're setting up a picture in your mind. So you can imagine these two guys graduating from college together. They both look the same. They could have been brothers almost. And now it's 25 years later and they're getting together and one guy is successful and the other guy isn't basically is what they're spelling out. There. Um, now going down to the bottom of the page where it says knowledge is power. Right now I am reading page one of the journal. It combines all the important news of the day with in-depth feature reporting. Every phase of, of the business news is covered from articles on inflation, wholesale prices, and it goes on. But I am reading page one of the journal. Right now, I'm reading page one of the journal, right? So you can imagine this executive sitting there in his office. So you find out that he is actually, by the time you get to the end of the letter, you find out he's the executive vice president of the Wall Street Journal. That, But this also uses the element of a story, which is very popular. So. One other thing I wanted to get to before I get out, you need to be kind of crafty with your imagery and not obvious a lot of times. Now, there's an image here, and it's the usual, I'm selling my course online, digital course online type of image that you see, you know. But with this image here, they're sitting out in your mind, you're going to get a junk load of stuff. Well, believe it or not, if you are selling a course, this image works still works well for some reason. <laughs> I know everybody knows that's not the way it really is, if, especially if you're ordering a, an online um, course or something. But on this particular kind of product, still works to this day. So you got to really check out what works and what doesn't work. A lot of people think this is a really horrible thing to do is have an image like this. But if it works, it works. You know, do whatever it takes to sell your your stuff. When you watch a lot of these uh, whiteboard videos on places like ClickBank and everything, they still show images like this because they know that they work. So uh, it's all up to you on that particular thing. But the point I'm trying to make is you want to be crafty and not obvious. You know, you won't, you don't want to overdo it too much. And the first ad that we looked at by Gary Halbert, you know, he only sets up an image once, but like I say, the image is in front of you all this time. And do you really think that you're going to have a pile of money like that from doing something with your credit cards? <laughs> I don't think so. That's just me. But, uh, but I tell you what, you know, if I'd never seen this ad before and I started reading through and seeing it, I probably would have been tempted to at least get the book and take a look at it. And, and you can always tell when an ad works is when you say to yourself, gee, I wish I'd gotten that or I wish I had that. You know, if you're saying that to yourself, you've got an ad that usually works pretty good. All righty. That's all I've got on this today. This has been Mark Elmo Ellis with Elmo Copy. If you like this video, hit the 
like button, leave a comment, and do all that other stuff they tell you to do. Also, you can go over to my website. I've got all kinds of freebies on there that you'd probably be interested in, swipe files and all that jazz. So God bless and have a great day.